Latin cuisine starts its foundation with sofrito. A good one will make all of your dishes great. A sofrito is passed down from generation to generation. We all think that the sofrito our mothers or grandmothers made was a perfect sofrito. When mom taught me to cook, I learned her instinct. But when she passed, I was so concerned that the sabor, um, the flavor, went with her. My sofrito is peppers, onions, chilies, cumin, tomatoes, saffron, garlic, cilantro. Uh, we're missing the cilantro, guys. Miami is interesting because of obviously we're attached, right? We're in this country, but we're totally detached in our culture and our food and our style and our vibrancy. Ustedes hacían empanadas cuando fueran jovencitas con los nenas. Mi mamá hacía los pastelitos, siempre, siempre para llevar para la escuela. A mi tío ese, ese me gusta. Entonces es una memoria dulce. We're flirtatious in our culture. We dress sexier than most. We speak a language unto ourselves. We don't really have many limits. Uh, I've got cilantro right over here. Awesome. What are you using it for? Sofrito. I actually uh, only use the stem. Only the stem and sofrito? For the sofrito, yeah. yeah. Why is that? To me, they just pack more of a punch, and then, of course, you know, we use the leaves for the top. My first chef job. I created this seafood stew. I served it to my mother, and she said, it's not you. So I made a sofrito, and I added the stems of cilantro, and I served it to her, and she cried. And I knew I did something right. So I want to thank you all, first of all, for being here with me today. This is quite an honor. I don't know if you all know I graduated here. I'm not going to count the years, but a long time ago. <laughs> so, do you all know what sofrito is? Is it like a base for stews? No seeds in the peppers, please. For you, my love, give me a brunoise of tomatoes. Okay. Whole garlic cloves are perfectly fine. Okay. And you, my love, when you do a brunoise, you slice, and then when you cut it this way, you have a nice brunoise, okay? One of the things that my mom used to tell me when I was younger, um, that if I cut off the root and put it on my head, <laughs> I wouldn't cry. It's not true, though. Oh. Did you, you, you try it? <laughs> so has anyone told you that you shouldn't be a chef because you're a woman? Yes. Yeah. Well, not because I was a woman, but because I probably didn't have the stamina. Every person I've ever worked with has told me not to do it and that I couldn't do it, that I was too delicate. Luckily today I can say that a lot of those people work for me <laughs> now. <laughs> so it never brought me down. It only lifted me up. You never know where it's going to take you. Get ready for the ride of your lives because it's, it's been a wonderful one for me and I hope it'll even be better for you all. I myself didn't think I would ever be here. I myself never thought I had the strength, emotionally or physically, so when I now look upon my career, I giggle, you know, and it's all because of mom. It's all because she made me fall in love with that first bite of food. It makes me very emotional. I didn't have the confidence in myself when she left. I was afraid to come back. I... Mommy? Hmm? Did you ever pick vegetables with grandma? Corn. Corn is delicious. We used Where? to go picking a lot. Where? In Homestead, down south. Wait, do they still have corn in Homestead? They still have corn in homestead. Yeah. Would you like to go with me sometime? The sabor, that's what I carry with me. It was the gift that she gave to me. 
and now through my hands. If you truly are a good chef, you have to be generous because you're sharing all of yourself, all of your recipes, all of your history, all of your background, all your hard work. It's about what you have in your soul. 